Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, along with my friend Kathy for Hello. Ask a Crafter number 24. Oh my gosh, can you believe yeah, it? Getting up there. Wow, <laughs> it's like a whole season. Some of us are getting up there a lot faster. <laughs> All right, so I, you have a birthday coming up. Happy birthday that on Friday. That was my point. <laughs> yes, no, I just assume not talk about them anymore. I have no problem with that whatsoever. Oh, oh, thank you. We're getting the snowstorm right here. Heck of a snowstorm coming Thursday. up. Thursday. Well, all I hear is that they're not saying how much. So yeah, I saw I saw a map on the Weather Channel and it was um, eight to twelve inches for us. Oh really? Which I was thinking, oh, only eight to twelve. That's nothing. You know, considering some of the some of these people no, don't get snow or getting a lot of snow. It's not really. I was just saying to my husband that we really haven't had much. I I I kind of in the mood for you know a thirty <laughs> incher, but I don't Oof. have to deal with cleaning up after. Yeah, that. yeah, that's a lot of work. All right, what do we have for questions this week? We have questions from Little Willie One Thousand. I just read that glycerin can be used as a retarder for acrylic paints. Do you know anything about that? And Christy Tyra also wants to know about glycerin and acrylic paint. Okay, well, um, what I would do, because um, Christy was wondering if she could put some paint, some of the glycerin in her paint bottle, I wouldn't do that, but what I would do is just take a, a spray bottle, put a, mostly water and maybe just four or five drops of glycerin, not a lot, and then um, use that to spray over your, um, over your paint while you're working. And I want to show you something else, because I know having it using acrylics, it, they dry out on you and you end up having to put more paint out and throw away what you've already got because it dried on you. And this is really neat. And this is uh, a palette seal. And basically what it is, it's a very shallow kind of Tupperware plastic container. And what you do is you put like um, a layer of paper towels and you spray it with water. Then you put a sheet of wax paper over it or a disposable palette sheet over it. And then you squirt your palette, your paint out. And then if you need to, you can give it a little squirt of that, you know, water or glycerin water on top. But then when you're done painting, you get interrupted or you just want to, you know, stop for a bit. You put this on top and you just close it down, just like a Tupperware container. It makes a little seal. This is made by Masterson, but you can use a shallow Tupperware container. You just close it all the way around and you're set until your next painting session. And you can keep, keep your paint like that for about uh, two weeks before it will get like, you know, mildewed or anything. But um, yeah, that's what I would do as far as the glycerin and keeping your paint fresh. Who's done that? We've wasted quite a bit of acrylic paint with the kids painting and being yeah. in that mood for a week or so, but there's, we haven't, haven't done that. Yeah, yeah, that works great. Okay, Carmen Hayes wants to know how to set up a watercolor palette. Oh, all right, well, I got my palette here. I'm prepared, I'm prepared today. Uh, you want to go in rainbow order, um, kind of like the color wheel. And I have more colors than you probably start out with as a beginner. But, um, so what I have here, I'm just gonna get that. Yeah, so like, uh, it's hard to hard to keep myself so I can point and, and see at the same time. I'm just gonna shove you right out of the way, Kathy, sorry. Um, so, oh yeah, so this is my hair. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's like brushing my hair in a mirror. So here I've got like a warm yellow, I've got, well, that's not even the right place. Okay, so <laughs> I've got like, you know, my lemon yellows, they would be closer to my greens, my warm yellows would be closer to my reds. Um, since I do have some browns in there, it's not a perfect color wheel, but I've got like my, my purpley blues close to purple. I've got my greeny blues closer to green. So you kind of want to put it around in a color wheel format. So when you go to mix colors, you're going to be grabbing like, if you want a nice bright orange, you'll grab your more um, orangey reds and you'll grab your more orangey yellows and it'll just make a little bit more sense as far as mixing. Um, you probably start out with six or eight colors as a beginner and you just want to have them in kind of rainbow order. So your cool or red, your crimson or rose matter will be closer to your ultramarine blue, which is a more purpley blue. So just kind of when you lay out your palette, and I do have a video on watercolor basics that explains that in depth. Um, in fact, I should put a link on that. Yeah, we, yep, we can do that. Yeah, that'll make, that'll feel, make a lot more sense to, uh, to do that. Um, so yeah, rainbow order and the color color wheel order for your palette. Okay, and she also wanted to know if gouache should be left to dry in a palette as well. You can do that. Um, I don't use that that often, so I usually just squirt out what I need. And gouache is simply opaque watercolor for those of you who don't know. Okay. So the Jump Junkie says, Hi Lindsay, can you suggest a product or tell me how to make something similar, preferred, to color wash spray paint from Ranger? I have not seen this in my local craft shop. Thanks. Sure, um, color wash is basically a spray ink with the difference that it's um, permanent on fabrics if you heat set it. So if you just want to spray ink, I recommend um, liquid watercolors. Blick makes a really nice one. Uh, they also make a nice pearlescent one that hasn't clogged my sprayers yet, and I really enjoy using those. Um, but if you need something that's going to be permanent on fabric, I would get liquid dye, such as a liquid writ dye, any liquid fabric dye, put it in a, um, a spray bottle, dilute it with as much water as you want. 
Um, and then after you spray it on your fabric, since a lot of times when you use dye, fabric dye, you heat the you heat it. it. Yeah. So dryer you want to dryer. Yeah, you want to like iron over it or or heat set it somehow before you wash it. That's the only thing. But yeah, fabric dye. Okay. So Violet William asks, how do I keep my hands steady while I paint? The longer I attempt to paint, the worse it gets. Uh, this is a mall stick. It's a homemade one. I took a drumstick and I took a circle of fabric, stuck some cotton ball in it, and then cinched it up with an elastic and stick it on this the end of this um, this drumstick. So to use this, um, Kath, can I get you to hold, pretend you're an easel and just hold this up for me? Certainly. Okay. So when you're painting, um, what you do is you'd hold this and then you can rest your hand along it while you paint. So you're kind of, you just kind of make a bridge like that so you can paint for a while without getting, um, without getting fatigued. So, you know, you just move it however you need to. Mall stick. You make it yourself or you can buy one commercially made. Teresa McKenzie. I have over 130 bottles of old plaid folk art bottled paint and it is clumped into a log shape. Can I save it? Does acrylic paint have a shelf life? It does have a shelf life and you'll notice, I noticed the paints in the bottles go bad and chunky before paints in the tubes. Because of the extra water in there, it may freeze and you don't know about it. Um, usually paints can survive a few freeze-thaw cycles. Um, artist quality paint does a little bit better because there's less water. Um, but what you can do, if it's really, if it's solid, you're, it won't go back into paint. But if you can get some out of the bottle, you may have to unscrew the cap and just kind of squirt out a big glob. You can kind of smush it up with a palette knife and if you get to that kind of buttery consistency, then you can use it. If it still is separating, if the water, if you get watery bits and then you get chunks, don't use it. It's not going to adhere to your paper and you might end up, it may fall apart and you know if you're going to put some time into it, you want to make sure you're using viable paint. And this is something Lindsay and I were talking about earlier is that I have tons and tons of acrylic paint that's really old. So make sure you check every <laughs> bottle before right. you just throw them right. out because even though you have, you know, six bottles that are eight year, years old, only two of them might be yucky or yep. four of them might be yucky, but two of them still might be good. So check them all before yep. you just ditch them. Absolutely. Okay, next question. Christy Tyra wants to know if she can use Mod Podge in place of gel medium. Absolutely. Um, if you notice, if you've ever tried to dump like Mod Podge from a gallon into your little container, it's very gelatinous. It is. It's yeah. not really pour porish. Starch. Yeah. Like starch. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. I use it in place of gel medium all the time. Huh. Starch. I wonder if that... If, like they talk about doing the glue in the water, I wonder oh, if you yeah. added some starch to maybe, it. Maybe, or maybe you cooked it or something. Hmm. Experiment. <laughs> maybe gelatin. They might, they might put gelatin oh, into yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sheila Johnson, what is rice paper and what's it good for? Thank you. Um, rice paper is a handmade, well it's usually handmade, it's a translucent paper that you can usually see fibers of like, um, kind of like threads. Um, it's usually used in Asian painting and Asian art, um, usually made in Japan, and you can use it for making paper beads. There's a wonderful uh, YouTuber, his name, uh, his name is Ross Barbara, but his YouTube channel is Realistic Art, and he makes a lot of jewelry with rice paper. It's gorgeous. Um, but it's also wonderful to add as layers on scrapbook pages or cards. Um, you can you, it feather, you can paint on it and it will feather a little bit, give you like that kind of Chinese brush look. Um, it's great for all sorts of crafts and arts applications. Use it in place of any decorative paper and see what you can come up with. Okay, and then we have some more crafty kind of topics instead of paints or mixed right. media. We have BJ Rolls mm -hmm. asks, Hi Lindsay and Kathy, have either of you got any ideas for recycling empty tin cans? I know you can emboss empty soda cans, but what could I do with the thicker tin cans, please? One thing, I remember doing this in grade school and it was so much fun. Um, our teacher had us roll up newspapers really tight and put them inside of a washed out soup can and then we um, taped a pattern to it and we hammered um, we hammered little holes all along the line and made lanterns for our families yeah. for Christmas. Yeah. You can also freeze water and do the same thing. Yeah, you know, you have to have something to, to pound against pound or against. it'll crush the can. Which right. is, you cover yeah. them with paper, use them for storage. I mean, here's. Yeah, this is one that I've covered with, I covered this with bits of masking tape and then washed over it with acrylic paint so it kind of is old and vintage. And I've used this for years to hold my, um, my tools and I put some wire on it so I could hang it. You could make a bunch of those. We made a bunch for my husband for Father's Day one year for his wood shop. Um, any other ideas for well, I've just, just Just more on the lines of that, I've seen on Pinterest where they've actually kind of made like almost like a whole 
center with like little satellite oh, yeah. cans oh, like yeah. screwed to a bigger can covered in fabrics or papers like at different heights on the main center yeah. can yeah it was really good and I was wondering I was thinking about like crushing it and keeping it together and if you have one of the you know the, our hole punch yep. that will go through just about anything almost yep, it it as like kind of an album cover and it would have a pocket oh because if you didn't cut it at all it would still kind of have that lip yep. that was in a finished edge and mm. just for something it's really different really Absolutely. different if you have a yeah. mixed media journal or yeah you can even plant them too you can do little planters oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah all sorts of things border for a garden yep spray painting them or yep. kids painting them splashing them with paint using for a border for a garden oh, yeah yeah search on pinterest that's a great idea though too you know to find some other ideas oh i'm sure yeah. there's way more out there oh yeah we can definitely even imagine and we have jlt 110 110 wondering about a good glue that i can get in canada for scrapbooking that will not wrinkle my scrapbook paper um, well, this is one of my favorites. This is a Helmar 450, and it's like a liquid, it's like a cold hot glue. It holds um, buttons and embellishments, metal, plastic, whatever, to your scrapbook pages. It's really wonderful. It's kind of pricey, but you're not going to go through a ton of it. Um, I do know in Canada, except for Quebec, you can order from joanne.com, so that might be a good place to find it. I got this at a local scrapbook store, but I haven't had to reorder. That local store's not around anymore, but um, I'm sure if you search Helmar 450, you'll be able to find a store that stocks it or an online place. Um, but as far as photos and papers, I think you're going to want a dry adhesive such as the ATG gun or Scotch double sided tape or any of the little tape runners that you can find in your local craft store. I'm sure Michaels has something. You said uh, She said she had a Michaels. I might have cut that part out of the okay. question. I think she here. said there's, a, there's one Michaels or something like that. And they should have some dry double sided adhesive. Yeah, I, I, overall I prefer using a dry glue unless I'm attaching an embellishment or something yep. that has some heft to it. Yep, absolutely. And then for like covering journals and stuff, you can always go with like a Yes paste. It's Y E S. It comes in a like eight or sixteen ounce jar, and it's excellent for book binding, and um, it lasts quite a long time. As long as you don't get the lid stuck on it, <laughs> you get a wax paper in the lid so you don't get it stuck on there. So it really works. <laughs> yes, yes, it does. Okay, and I have Stan K six two six nineteen seventy three. Question, can you make a pin cushion with a mason jar and burlap? Yes, you can. The weave on burlap is going to be a little looser than like cotton, so you might even want to use a little bit of cotton underneath. But I have a video called Fall Recycled Jar Favors, I believe, and it's the same technique you'd use, you would do a pin cushion with, but um, instead of just putting the, uh, the, okay, so we have a mason, let me just see what time it is. Okay, so we, I can explain this. We have, you have a mason jar and it's got the lid, which is in two parts. You've got the disc and you've got the band. So what you wanna do is um, take like some uh, batting or would you use like a steel wool or something so you sharpen your needles while you're I would that? I would recommend it at least in part of it maybe not necessarily for the whole of it if you yeah. want but yeah that's a good yeah. I, good idea for oh. that's what is in pin cushions okay so take some like steel wool and some fiber fill and put that on top of the disc so you get the flat disc and then um, cover it over I would cover it over with a cotton first just because I think the, I think the so. stuff even just a muslin if you want yeah, yeah it doesn't have to be anything a scrap that you have or whatever yeah because yeah, the burlap will have too many holes yeah. and the cotton will start coming out or whatever you use for stuffing them. Right. And then put the uh, put the um, burlap on top and push it inside of the band so then you'll get that nice dome and um, you can glue that to the inside of the band if you want to. And then you just screw that on your jar and then your jar could hold, you know, sewing bobbins. needles, bobbins, whatever you yeah. want. But absolutely. If you're confused, just look at my, fo my fall jar favor video and it'll show you how to do that. I could put a link to that below as well. Okay. And last, uh, Jackie is looking for crafters in Des Moines, Iowa area. So leave a comment if you're interested and hopefully she can find some friends to craft with. Yeah, and I guess if anybody is looking for people to craft with, if they wanted to leave a comment and say like, hey, I'm near Seattle, any crafters over here? Or anybody know of any crops? Or, you know, or we're having a crop here, anybody want to come? Or, you know, something like that. Just, you know, use caution when you're meeting strangers over the internet. <laughs> Have a backup plan, you know, a friend yes. to call. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Check in with you. Yeah, I think Lindsay's right. talked about that before. So. Yes, absolutely. Well, that, that does it. All the other questions I answered in the comments section. And uh, if you have a question, just leave it below and we'll We'll get to it next week either with a typed response or we'll answer it on the show thank you so much for watching until next time happy crafting bye all